gone on record many times saying that the Pokedex is kind of like those people on Twitter who are way too into the idea of like ancient aliens or something. They make all these wild claims with little to no evidence to back them up and just expect people to go along with it. Except in the world of Pokemon, it's not some rando on Twitter, it's the go-to encyclopedia for all the world's fauna. I've talked about Megcargo being hotter than the surface of the sun before, but today I thought I'd tackle another absurd Pokedex claim. The fact that Waylord is less dense than air. Or is he? See, there's been a long debate. What do you mean Game Theory already did it? Someone else did the Waylord density video in 2023? I've been sitting on this video idea for months. So, true story, I've had this idea for a video for a while where I would grab a model of Waylord, pull it into an engineering CAD program to find its exact volume, and use that to settle the long-standing debate of whether or not Waylord is less dense than air. Seriously, I took notes and everything, I drew diagrams and stuff, it was gonna be great. I mean, it took me a while to get started on the actual video because... I'm lazy, but it seems like I've waited too long because a couple of days ago, the Game Theory channel made a video that's literally exactly what I was going to do. The whole time I was watching the video, I was hoping that they would mess something up and I could salvage the video with a sick Game Theory was wrong video, you know, make a thumbnail with like a big red arrow pointing at MatPat. But no, they, they totally nailed it. They basically made the exact video I was thinking of only with way better editing than anything Richard could pull off. So, it seems like I'm gonna have to chuck this video idea in the scrap pile and come up with some- Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, play that last part again! Tune in next time when we calculate how the density of Cosmoum would end the known universe. Looks like we're back in business, folks. Game theory was wrong. I don't care if that was just some throwaway joke tacked onto the end of the video. On the very off chance that they're actually planning on making that video, I'm gonna do this now. Welcome to the first and maybe last episode of the Chip Tide Show Mini. Richard, hit that mini intro. I don't know, just figure something out. Now, I can't be certain, but I'm assuming MatPat is referring to the popular theory that Cosmoum is dense enough to implode into a black hole that would swallow the whole solar system. From what I could find, this theory originates from a 2016 Reddit post that attempted to calculate the density of Cosmoum and found that it was around 730 times denser than the black hole at the center of our galaxy. It's a fun theory with lots of big numbers, and you know I love me some big numbers. And it seems to be supported by the Pokedex, which describes Cosmoum consuming light in order to grow. But there's one problem, and that's that it's just not true. Uh, MatPat, go ahead and stick to your FNAF lore for now. There's a new video game math guy in town. Alright, first of all, the main error with this original post is that Cosmoum is zero feet four inches tall, not 0 .04 inches like Mr. E thought. But beyond correcting that simple error, this thread is filled with a lot of the same arguments that came up during the Waylord debate. Overly generous assumptions about Cosmoop's shape, questions of whether or not it's four inches tall or four inches wide, problems that I could solve by using the same 3D modeling strategy that Game Theory used for Waylord, but as it turns out, none of that actually matters. See, while black holes are incredibly dense, there is no set density at which a black hole will definitely form. Instead, a black hole is formed when a given mass is condensed into a volume that is less than its Schwarzschild radius, which is equal to this formula. Take the mass of your object, multiply it by twice the gravitational constant, that's just this big number here, and then divide that by the square of the speed of light, and you'll get the radius of the sphere you would need to squish that mass down into in order to form a black hole. Why does any of this matter? Well, it means that there isn't some easy density threshold we could compare Cosmoum to. In fact, the more mass you have, the less dense the black hole will be. 
So in order to find out if Cosmoem will implode into a supermassive black hole that would destroy the Milky Way, we don't actually need to know its density at all. What we're actually looking for is a height. We know that Cosmoem is 999.9 kilograms, so all we need to do is put that in for M, plug and chug, and we find that the Schwarzschild radius for an object of Cosmoem's mass is 1.48 times 10 to the negative 24 meters. Since the radius of a sphere is equal to half of its height, in order to form a black hole, Cosmoem would need to be at most 2.97 times 10 to the negative 24 meters, or 1.16 times 10 to the negative 22 inches tall. Technically a little smaller, since Cosmoem is an oval as opposed to a sphere, but either way, just, just, just a wee bit smaller than its actual height of 4 inches. Just, you know, just a little, just a little bit, just almost 4 inches bit. 10 to the minus 22nd is so small that it's kind of hard to imagine. So just to put that in perspective, in order to implode into a black hole, Cosmoem would need to be over 3 million times smaller than a quark, one of the elementary particles that make up protons and neutrons, which themselves make up the nucleus of atoms. Or I should say 3 million times smaller than we think think quarks are, because they are quite literally too small to measure. So, I mean, obviously, with that frame of reference, we can all appreciate how small this truly is. Three million times smaller than those things that are too small to measure? Pfft, we all know that. At scales of that size, our understanding of the very laws of physics start to break down, including the Schwarzschild equation that we just used. So I say that at that size, Cosmoem would form a black hole, but in truth, we have no idea what would happen. Thankfully though, we don't have to worry about any of that because at a nice and comprehensible four inches tall, Cosmoem is still very dense for sure, but it's not gonna be ending realities anytime soon. I mean, it's got cosmic power and teleport. I think you'll be fine. As much as I hate to admit it, in this one instance, the Pokedex does make sense. Now, Magneton, on the other hand, that one actually makes no sense. I mean, it's just three Magnemites stuck together, but it's ten times as heavy? What's going on?